Hello and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I am going to be explaining what is the big end data type. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, everybody, so to get started in today's episode, I need you to open the same tools that we have been using, which is MDN W3Schools and the same website that we have been coding in so far. I already have also Visual Studio Code open here to show you some examples of Big Int. And well, if we jump into MDN, all you have to do is type in on the search box, Big Int, and you'll, you're going to get a couple of articles. Just click on the first one and you're going to get into this page. And then when you go to W3 schools, just jump into the JavaScript section, scroll all the way down and search for something that says JS Big Int. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to know what is a Big Int, right? So let's read a little bit here on MDN. It says that Big Int value represents numeric values. Pay attention to this, numeric values, which are too large to be represented by the number primitive. Okay, so it represents big uh, integers that cannot be represented with the numeric value, which is the numeric uh, primitive data type on JavaScript. Um, but before I get into the explanation of big int, I believe that there is something that you need to know and understand. If you already understand this, well, you can move forward the video and I'm okay with that. Um, but for those of you who do, who do not know this concept, I am going to explain. Uh, first, you need to know what is an integer. An integer, we can say that is a whole number, okay? An integer can be a simply number like, um, let's say as an example, it could be, it could be, let's say as an example, the number one, it could be number two, it could be number three, or it could be also number zero, okay? And also it could be negative, a negative number like uh, minus one, minus two, or minus three, okay? So this is what is uh, called an integer. An integer, by the way, comes from the Latin word integer, which means whole, or it could mean untouched. Just so you know, one thing to note is that um, an integer cannot be, and I'm going to type in here, an integer cannot be a decimal, a decimal or a fraction, okay? So you cannot say that an integer is 1.5, let's say, um, that's not good. Um, or you cannot say that an integer is one, um, one and a half, as an example, okay? So these two are not considered integers because they have a decimal and this one is a fraction. So those are not integers. Integers are just known as whole numbers, like one, two, three, zero, or minus one, two, three. So I hope that makes sense. But if you still have questions about integers, just drop them down in the comment section below so I can help you out, okay? Um, perfect, so now that you know what an integer is, um, and I hope that you're clear about that, let's take a look at big int, which it stands for big integers, okay? Um, and as the word says, um, you know, big integers mean a big whole number, okay? So the question that you might be asking yourself right now is why would we use big integers in JavaScript if we already have the number data type and we can add numbers to it, right? Okay, so let me jump into the uh, into W3Schools and I'm going to show you a couple of examples here. So on W3Schools, if you read a little bit, it says, that JavaScript big int a variable is used to store big integer values, as I was explaining, that are too big to be represented by a normal JavaScript number, okay? So let me give you an example. I am going to copy this number right here, which is 15 digits, okay? So I'm going to go back to our code and we're going to create a variable. We're going to call this variable just num. Um, a short way to say number, and then we're going to give it a value of nines, okay? And if you count these numbers, uh, I have here 15 digits, okay? So 15 digits um, and represented by the numeral or by the number uh, that primitive data type will be represented good in, um, in, in, in our code, in our console. 
So if I hit save and let's make sure to console.log this, console.log uh, num, uh, okay. If we do that, let's hit save, going back to our console, let's hit refresh. JavaScript will give us the number that we just typed in, right? Now, here I wrote down 15 digits, okay? Now take a look and see what's gonna happen at the moment that I add one more digit, 16. Let me copy all this. I'm going to create a new variable and I am going to call this num1, okay? And we are going to also console.log, console.log num1, okay? Now I'm going to hit save um, and let's see, I think I added the last number here. Let me just refresh. Okay, see, okay, so right now we have 15 digits on each um, variable in num and num1. Now I am going to add the 16 digit, the 16 digit one more number to num1, just so you can see what's gonna happen. So right now I just added one more nine and you have 16 digits on this um, num1. So let's hit save, going back to our code, let's hit refresh and boom. You see what's happening here? I mean, as soon as you add digit number 16 to your nines, JavaScript using the number um, primitive data type will round up this number. And this is not good if you want to be very precise when you are typing in, let's say, a specific number um, or a big number that you just want that number to stay there, like this example, you don't want this number to be rounded up. Um, then that's why we are going to use the big int uh, primitive data type to make sure that this number will keep the exact precision, right? We don't want this to be round up, then we are going to use the big int uh, primitive data type. So let's go ahead and use that. How do you create a big int um, primitive data type? It's very simple. We're going to create a third um, variable. We're going to call this const num2, okay? And then this variable, we're going to give the same value that we have here, okay? The same value. And you might say, well, right now is a same number, right? It's just a number data type. Well, to transform this number into a big int data type, the only thing that you have to do is at the end of the last number, you just add the letter N, okay? That's all you have to do here. And then as soon as you do that, let me just go ahead and console.log. Okay, console.log number two now, num2. And then I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit refresh. And boom, as you can see, right now you have a large number which is keeping its value. It's, it, this one is 16 digits, which is more, I mean one more uh, digit than the usual that you can type in to keep a precision in the number data type. Um, and now we are just keeping its value. We're not rounding up the number like on the number data type. Okay. With big int, we're keeping the number as it is. Okay. Now, another way that you can create a big int number will be the following. Let me just create another variable and we're going to call this variable num3. What I am going to do this time, and this is another way that you can um, type in big int number, is just use the big int method. Um, and Inside of parentheses, all you have to do is add a string, okay? And then you're going to type in all the nines that you wrote down here, the 16 digits, okay? You write down that number and just make sure that you put it as a string. And then what big int is going to do is that it's going to transform this string into a integer, okay? So... I am going to console.log this now, console.log. Um, let me just make it and type it on the other line. So console.log in parentheses num3, uh, okay? This is num3. We're going to console.log num3. And now if I hit save, going back to our code, let's hit refresh. And as you can see, this has been transformed into a big int um, number because the letter N is at the end. Okay, so that's another way that you can um, that you can create a big int number. Now, keep in mind that if you're going to use this method right here, um, make sure to use this quotes to make it a string. Because if you do not make this a string, 
then this is going to be considered still a number and it's not going to be converted in the right way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go ahead and let's say I'm going to copy all this and I'm just going to get, give this variable a different uh, name. I'll call this number four and I'll remove the quote just to show you what, what is going to happen if you just do it this way. And then we're going to console.log num4 num4 okay i'm going to hit save going back to our code let's hit refresh you see what's happening right here this number that it's taking it it's converting it into um a big int but it's keeping it as a primitive number data type so we don't want to do that we want to keep the precision remember big int uh, is used in order for you to keep the precision of the number that you type in on your code. Okay. So if you want to keep the exact precisions of nines or the exact precisions um, of, of an integer, then you will use big int. If not, if you don't care, if you don't care if that number is rounded up, then I'll suggest you to use just the regular number uh, primitive data type. Okay. Uh, but if you want to keep precision for large numbers, uh, which are exceeding 15 digits from number 16 and on, then you will use the big integer. So I hope this all this is making sense. Um, but just remember, if you're going to use the big int method, just make sure, make sure that you add the quotes. So that way it's represented in the correct way. Okay. So that's what I have for today's episode. I hope that this has been very clear for you. And now that you know the difference between the number data type and the big int primitive data type because both of them are very useful to be quite honest i mean big int is just for very special scenarios that you will use it but it's but of course it's important for you to understand its concept and that you can know that this is there so that you can use it and one thing that i will recommend you to do is go to mdn and read this article because if you scroll down, this article is going to give you way more examples, is going to go more deeply into some aspects of big int um, when it comes to using it in your code, when it comes to creating, let's say, conditionals, which we haven't talked about yet, but I will talk about those in later episodes. Um, it's going to give you more information about cryptography, the cryptography used for uh, or the big int used for cryptography, which is not recommended, by the way. But if you will use it, it, it gives you um, a guide in how to use it if you need to use it. So, uh, I mean, this article has a lot of very useful information in order for you to understand the full uh, concept of big int in JavaScript. OK, so that's it for today's episode, everybody. I hope that you liked this video. I hope that you have learned a lot. Remember to study. Remember to practice. And well, if you like this video, just don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And remember that you can always ask Lixie. Bye, everyone. And see you again in the next episode. <laughs>